Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you very much for joining me for today's video. Before I get started with today's video, just a quick public service announcement. There is, it's very, very small, but a teeny tiny little spider on my screen, on my wooden screen. Very tiny for those of you who do not like spiders. And just to put this into some sort of context, I am about 40 centimeters away from the screen. So unless it can jump, I'm safe. Now, he seems happy where he is, and I have named him Robert. There's also another one on the other side of the screen, who again, seems very happy. Naturally, I've named him Ernest, but I just wanna say, if you see a teeny tiny little dot, they're so small, I don't even know if you would see them if they started to climb up the screen or over the screen, but if you see them, just give them a shout out in the comments. That's Robert and Ernest. Okay, guys, good. Right, now let's get started with today's video now that we've dealt with Robert and Ernest. Um, so basically I have been going through my handbags. In fact, I've been going through or, or just assessing, I would say over the last couple of months, my wardrobe in perhaps a little bit more detail than I might have done before. And I've touched on this in some of my recent videos and it's this change that I think a lot of us have experienced and seen over the last year because of current events and I feel definitely that my outlook on mm, not so much fashion I still very much get a lot of pleasure from fashion styling my own outfits putting outfits together browsing Pinterest all that kind of stuff I still get a lot of pleasure out of doing that but I think I'm I'm starting to realize what I need and what I don't need. I think that's more the sort of self-assessment that I've been doing. So most recently I've been going through my handbags and what I thought I would do today is just share with you guys my most worn and my least worn handbags. Right, so starting off with the bag, which I would say is definitely my most worn bag, purely because of the amount of times I've worn it for the length of time that I've had it. And it is of course my Loewe puzzle bag, which some of you will also know as Judith. This bag I absolutely love. Even though it's three years old, I'm just having a brief look now to make sure I don't slip up on this but she still looks as good as new I've I've got no scratches on there and actually the leather on this bag has quite a nice texture to it not super textured but it's also not super smooth so if you did get a little scratch it's not the sort of thing that would be totally obvious that you could really see and that's why I've always championed the Loewe puzzle especially in this color or in black or perhaps navy just because it's so versatile and incredibly durable. And I have to admit, I'm not the most precious person with my handbags. I do put them on the floor a lot. In fact, my sister-in-law was taking the mickey out of me the other day for putting my Celine on the floor and just, she couldn't believe it. And yeah, it's just such a good bag for durability. As I just mentioned, incredibly versatile. I personally went for the tan color because at the time I felt like that was a color that was missing from my sort of bag collection of that time. I do have a couple of tan bags in my collection now, but still this is always a go-to for me. And the actual shade of tan that this one comes in, it's just, it's tan perfection. I know it's a bold statement, but for me it is tan perfection. It's a really nifty little bag. I love the fact that it works as a crossbody. It's also a bit of a TARDIS bag, although it seems like it's quite small, it just fits so much in there. Even when there was a time where I used to carry a camera around with me for vlogging, um, daily life kind of things, that would always fit in here. Obviously my bag contents now is a lot smaller given the current sort of freedom situation, but yeah, it's just such a good bag, can fit everything that I need in there, works as a crossbody, works as a handbag, works as a shoulder strap, detachable, adjustable, zippers and pockets and things, durable, nice leather, very long lasting. And after three years, I am still not sick of this bag, which for me is always a really good indication 
of a wise bag purchase. Right, moving on to my second most worn bag. And this one, although I only got this, this is the Celine So Sangle in the medium size in black calf leather. I think it's calf leather. I bought this one secondhand. Sorry, I forgot to say my Loewe puzzle that was purchased new, brand new, I think from my Teresa. This was purchased secondhand last August from Vestiaire. Sorry, I almost forgot then. Was was from Vestiaire. I bought this one in excellent condition. It was in such good condition. And even though I've worn this quite a lot, and this was the bag I referenced just a minute ago that I put on the floor the other day and my sister-in-law went crazy. This bag, I have used it a lot. I have thrown it around and mistreated her a little bit. And again, still good as new in my opinion. There's no scratches, no wear on the corners. Um, there's a little bit of fluff stuck on the shoulder strap, which I think a few of us have kind of discussed one-on-one. -on -one. That's just one of the small drawbacks. But otherwise, it is such an incredible bag. This bag, actually, I was thinking about this earlier, was a bit of a game changer bag for me. Despite the fact that I only got this in August last year, and I think perhaps I'd already started going down that road of rethinking handbags and the amount that I have and the purpose of my handbags and the style of my handbags. And once I got this one, I mean, it was clear to see from my Instagram, although I don't share every single one of my outfits on Instagram, it was clear to see from the ones that I did that I very, very quickly grew to love this bag. And I was wearing it almost with every single outfit such a practical bag, it's comfortable, um, it can fit obviously loads in because it is it is a large-ish bag, I would say. For me, it's perfect. I obviously don't commute to work. I don't need to use public transport like on a daily basis. So the lack of any kind of security in the top section doesn't really make a difference for me. It's actually fine. Um, so I genuinely couldn't really fault this bag. There's a couple of minor niggles, which I've mentioned in the full um, bag review that I've done, which I'll leave a link down below for. But yeah, this bag was such a game changer for me. It really sort of indicated to me how I didn't need a massive logo, how I didn't really need any bells and whistles. It's such a basic bag, but it just made me realize, and also the fact that I use this above probably any other bag. My Loewe puzzle is my most used bag because I've had it for longer, but I think if I were to keep using this one for the length of time that I've had the Loewe puzzle, this would definitely take the number one spot. It gets all of the thumbs up. For anyone that's ever wondering, it gets all of the thumbs up. Right, bag number three in my most used category is my Loewe basket bag. Now I get asked about the size of this one quite a lot because I do have two of these bags. I have the medium size and then I have this size. This size was actually only available for the first season that this bag was brought out and this was just called Basket. So this is somewhere in between the small and the medium. If anyone wants them, I can leave you guys with the measurements so that if you're looking for one of these secondhand, you can find this exact size because I know there's a lot of confusion over the sizes. It is, as I've mentioned before on Instagram and to anyone that's ever kind of asked this question, is it worth the money? It is just a basket bag. It's obviously all about the logo. Even though this logo is ginormous because it's embossed rather than printed and because there's no sort of color change. I do think that it's quite subtle. This obviously is a bit of an iconic bag now. This was the first kind of designer bag, I think that kicked off the whole designer basket bag trend. In terms of durability, again, it is just a basket bag. So it's really gonna depend on how you look after this. I use this size in particular, which is why this one is in my most worn category. I use this size a lot. I think this size is great for if you live in a city and you don't potentially live like in a slightly more holiday environment. The medium size for me is definitely more of a beach bag or a pool bag. It's the sort of size that you can fit in a book, sunscreen, a towel, you know, all of those kind of holiday essentials. Whereas this one, I just feel is 
more appropriate for day-to-day -day use. It's holding up really well, to be honest with you. I've got a little bit of wear here on the wicker, but not anything that I'm too concerned about. Again, it really is just gonna be down to how you look after the bag, how you store it, and I suppose a little bit down to luck. Sometimes it's just bad luck if you catch it on something. A lot of people have asked me, does this ever catch on clothes? If you're wearing some sort of fabric like fine silk, then yes, it probably would, because it is slightly rougher texture. And as you can see, there's little spiky bits here and there sticking off it, because it is a wicker. But otherwise, you know, I normally would just wear it with a sweater perhaps around this sort of time of year or a basic t-shirt or basic vest which are made out of cotton so there would not really be any snagging. Right now moving on to my least worn bags and unfortunately this one is going to take the number whoop the number one spot. This was um, from Zoops which I've spoken about quite a bit. I'm gonna have to put it down actually because it's really heavy because it's probably one of the most stuffed out bags that I have. It's padded out with about a hundred dust bags. It's crazy, so it's a little bit heavy. So this, I believe I got in, I'm tempted to say the tail end of 2018, or it could have been early 2019. I can't quite remember. I wore it quite a few times actually, around that sort of time frame when I got the bag. However, over the last couple of years, it's just kind of slipped down the list and it's been one of those that I just haven't reached for at all. In particular, when I got the Celine So Sangle, this just almost dropped off my radar, to be honest. Now, I wouldn't have said there was any specific reason why I don't necessarily reach for this. It, granted, it isn't particularly the most comfortable bag because those chain straps are quite heavy and they're quite clunky. They don't necessarily always sit well on the shoulder. And then if you're just wearing something like a vest and you've got a lot of open skin, it starts to not dig in, but it will start to imprint in your skin. And it's, it's also quite a heavy bag because it's quite a thick leather, even without my millions of dust bags inside. It's quite a thick leather. The handles themselves are relatively heavy. So I think it's just an all round, there's something there that doesn't quite sit well with me and that's why I'm not really reaching for this as much. However, it's a bag that for now I'm kind of keeping hold of because it's Chanel and Chanel are good investments and you can generally always get your money back on vintage Chanel depending on how well looked after the bag is. The bag is in the exact same state it was in when I got it. So there is some tarnishing on these very hefty chunky chain straps and there is a little bit of wear on some of the corners but otherwise for such a smooth leather it's barely got any scuffs and scratches on it it's still in what I would say is excellent condition it's just not a bag unfortunately that I really reach for anymore and it seems such a shame that it goes to waste sat in my wardrobe but as I said, I do see it as more of an investment. Uh, and for that reason, that's why I'm just keeping hold of it for a little while longer. Right, number two, and it's really sad actually that this has gone on to number two because I actually unboxed this in a vlog I wanna say in 2019, I think. So I first fell in love with this bag when I saw it on this incredibly chic Parisian woman in Paris, obviously. And it was Paris Fashion Week 2016, the only Paris Fashion Week I've ever been to, and thankfully my last. And I, we were, me and my friend went into this, I think it was a Japanese restaurant perhaps. It was absolutely peeing it down outside with rain. We'd got drenched and we quickly ran into this really dark but cozy restaurant and we were having some soup or something and these two women came in who who I at the time thought clearly were something to do with like, uh, with uh, Paris Fashion Week. They could have just been Parisian and just super chic for all I know. And she had, one of them had this bag but in an olive suede and I couldn't stop staring. And my friend said to me, you need to stop staring. And I was like, I can't, they're just so chic. And that bag she's got is insane. Like I love it. And I then 
sort of got really obsessed with this bag over the years to the point where eventually I found this one secondhand. It came all the way from Australia. It's in really good condition and it's just such a shame. This is one of those bags which I think is something that I admired from afar but the reality of it, and I probably knew the reality of this bag before I even bought it, but for some reason I was just blindsided by its beauty. But unfortunately the bag just doesn't work for me in reality, which is, I'm really sad about it. And I, as you can see, I'm struggling to let it go. I feel like this is a bag that by now I should really start to think about selling on so that it can go to a home where it will be loved because anytime I posted this bag on my Instagram, so many people went crazy for it. Anytime, even when I did the unboxing, loads of you guys were incredibly complimentary over this bag and it is so beautiful. I just feel bad. I feel bad for the bag that it's just sat in my wardrobe, not getting any use. And if I'm being brutally honest, I don't think it is a bag that's going to see a lot more use from me. I'm essentially just persuading myself now at this stage to sell it. Right, on to my third and final bag in the least worn category. This is the Wandler Ava bag. It's the large size in black, as you'll be able to see. This, I'm sure it's coming across on screen how fresh and new and beautiful this looks because this I only bought November last year and actually, I still really love this bag and it could potentially be because of the current situation why I haven't necessarily got a lot of wear out of this bag, but I've probably worn it three times, which is a really small amount to have worn a bag. Now, I'm gonna justify this a little bit. I got this in November last year and we've been in lockdown pretty much since. I mean, recently we've have had obviously a little bit of freedom and some of our restrictions have started to be lifted. But for me, this is, I would say, more of a winter bag and therefore the winter period has already been and gone. So I feel like that's why I haven't worn it very much because throughout the majority of winter, we were in proper lockdown. So I think that's why I haven't worn this bag. However, I feel like there are a few drawbacks to this bag. I don't think I've done a review of this, but I did feature it in, I think, best and worst purchases, maybe? Best and worst luxury purchases. It's a really nice bag. However, it is quite structured, which is good and bad at the same time, because when you look at the size of it from the side, it's ginormous. So it's definitely a more cumbersome bag. It's also a very, very soft and smooth leather. So I think there's part of me which is a bit worried about getting this scuffed and scratched. With it being leather, the scratches would be, I think, not easy, but it would be easier to buff out as opposed to suede or any other kind of like fabric bag, which is gonna take some more scrubbing. But I think mainly it's just down to the sheer size of it. And also because, let's just get the Celine so angle so we can kind of compare. They're similar-ish, you know? They are a similar size, just slightly different orientations, I suppose. The Ava is kind of a landscape version of the So Sangle. And I think because they're both black, although I love this contrast stitching on the Ava, the white contrast stitching, I think perhaps just because I have that Celine So Sangle, I reach for that above anything else. So again, that just goes to show how much of a life-changing bag that was because it would always be the bag that I would go for regardless of season, regardless of outfit, because it just goes with anything. Right, there we have it. So those were my three most worn and three least worn. I'm just gonna check on Robert. He's still there, I'll have to check on Ernest in a minute. So that's good news. Hopefully he didn't sneak up halfway through the video and then disappear. Um, thank you as always, and thanks from Robert and Ernest for watching and I will see you guys next time.